Do you need a home nurse? There are several benefits. Create your own cloud, file media sharing. You could do some server functionality, back up that data of yours, but there is a catch. They can be expensive. Races E Studios present on a budget home server. Take your hardware, probably old hardware, turn it into a low power draw home file server. This is our candidate machine here, the HP rather capable small form factor Compaq Elite 8300. These are valued around 60 to 100 US dollars, rather dated as I mentioned, but very capable as a server. And some old gaming RAM will also feature, including a very, very cool NVMe plug and play USB adapter, including also some thermal cooling pads. So much content coming up, get ready. Now, a couple of other things, TrueNAS. We're also gonna have a look at TrueNAS, very, very good software to allow you to manage your server system. Simple login, nice ability to create lots and lots of different uh, specifications on there. We can even monitor our computer usage right down to CPU and RAM usage. Introducing your host Racer Z, great to have you there. Video breakdown, we're gonna take this Compact Delight 8300, throw some parts in there, get it up and running and we'll skip a few things on the TrueNAS installation. We'll save that for another video but for now let's crack open this machine. Oh, that looks rather compact. The joys of small form factor. So that'll be our power supply there, neatly tucked away. Notice the rotisserie concept here, very cool. We just slide those out. That's our CPU fan shroud. Random uh, SATA cable there, but it's okay. So not a lot of space in there, as you can tell. Uh, slot there for hard drives. Now let's zoom in there. What are some of the features here? Well, we got an i3, Intel, yes, third generation, a little bit old, two core integrated graphics, four gig of memory at the moment, and a very low power drawing, 240 watt power supply. Now I know what you're thinking, this isn't very powerful and it's really old. You're absolutely correct, but that's not why we're here. We're here because we're gonna turn it into a home server. We don't need a lot of power. In fact, this probably is overpowered for what you could do with a machine like this. So we'll give it a go, we'll do a slight upgrade. First things first, we need to get our hard drive in there. Now, this is a one terabyte, very, very capable uh, red NAS drive. So super well suited for this purpose. Very easy to expand. We can fit up to about three hard drives. You probably could do a bit more if you get really creative, but we'll go for three hard drives. We will have to move the DVD writer in this case to get the third one in, but for now, very easy, we'll put in one hard drive. We may be able to find more later on, but for now, this will get us started. Uh, let's just speed that up slightly. You'll see me working at a really fast pace throughout this video to cut it short for your viewing pleasure. Okay, we'll reinstall the DVD writer for now. As I said, we can upgrade that in the future, but very easy plug and play. And we have a spare plug there for another hard drive. Now, G-Skill Rip Jaw Z Gaming RAM. Talk about retro kickback. These go way, way back. They're from my X79 old gaming rig. Long since retired. In fact, the uh, motherboard blew a capacitor, I believe. But since then, this RAM's been in a box. Does it still work? I'm not sure, but we will find out. Very capable, although uh, really old at this point in time. But still really cool RAM. We'll see if it works. Now let's see what we've got in there. We have one single four gig DIMM. We shall replace that with the very trusty gaming RAM. Although it's probably 10 years old, but that's okay. Completely irrelevant for this build. So there it is. Very, very nice PC3. I believe it's uh, 1600 megahertz. So probably very similar to what we see in most of our servers from uh, certain generations. Yep, there it is, nicely focused. Okay, so we'll put that one in a sleeve for now. We do not need it. Done. Whoa, what was that? Let's zoom in here. RAM going in. Now, kind of important, you'll notice there are four RAM slots in this case, giving you the option to expand, which is pretty good, especially for this particular machine. Normally, you may only expect two modules. Now, if you scan through the uh, side panel there, yes, side panel, 
you will notice a very clear color coordination for the memory installation. You wanna make sure that you match your memory. In this case, we wanna pair slot one and three and two and four. And I believe we will populate DIM one and three. So hopefully I've got these in the right place. You'll have to check my work. If it's in the wrong place, memory will likely still work. Although on this particular machine, I've had endless issues because if it's in the wrong slots, it just doesn't boot. So you gotta be careful on that. Make sure you match. And I believe the setup here works flawlessly. We'll find out later. But for now, that's looking really good. Uh, very, very well approved. Now, what do we do next? We've got our RAM. What could we possibly do next? Wow, great, great question. The most logical thing is our boot drive. What is this? This is the EasyCast NVMe enclosure. Yes, that's right. We're gonna take an NVMe, we're gonna put it into a aluminum extruded enclosure and run it through USB. Now you're wondering, why don't I just install it on the computer? Well, there's so many reasons. One, space. Two, I can take this and plug it into any computer, giving us the ability to very quickly transition our NAS into another machine, should we so desire. And in fact, I'm also gonna install Windows on this machine, giving us the ability to run Windows and we can use it as our home NAS. Let's launch in. Now, what do we have at the rear IO? Well, lots of USB 3.0 ports. That's right, there are four of those on this machine. Very useful if you do need to plug in some expansion ports, whatever it might be. Okay, time to get serious. We need to take this to the next level. That's looking really good. Okay, so I think we're ready. Nice, rather dated uh, ports there for video outputs, but yes, this is in integrated graphics, really cool. So side panel, I highly recommend that you lay the machine down. Uh, very difficult and awkward doing it standing up. I shall try to do it without blocking the camera, but no guarantees, this is very, oh, that's really tricky. Lots of bad noises, that's okay. I think that's perfect. Yes, that is perfect. We will leave it like that. Sorry to those who are perfectionists. Looks slightly out of place. That's okay. No, it feels okay. It feels okay. We'll leave, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. That's pretty close. Definitely lay it down. Does help a lot with the fitment. Okay, that looks better now. Perfect. Okay, so this machine is ready. Are you guys ready? Let's do this. We're going to get the server up and running. USB in. NVMe installed. Now we will have to install our Truna software. Make sure that uh, clip is clipped in there. Perfect. Let's do it. Now, next step, VGA cable. Yes, that's a very old type of connection. Hopefully you're familiar, but this is all we need to get this thing plugged into our graphics. Get ready. Fatality. Okay, I think we have a pulse. This is sounding bad. Arcade game, let's go for a dodge the RAM issues. With your uh, character selection there. Victory. Okay, I've played this before. This is easy. Oh, there's the RAM. Oh, no, that's not good. The RAM. Critical the RAM error. got us on that one. So, five beeps on this machine. That was epic means the RAM is not functioning. That's right, one of those RAM modules likely had, uh, shall we say, a bad day, or maybe a bad 10 years, I don't know. It's had a hard life and it's decided to stop work. Whoa, what is this? Where'd this hard drive come from? That was in there earlier, you guys saw that, right? What is it? Ah, oh, 500 gig. Ah, oh, so that arcade game actually gave us free loot. That's awesome. Okay, so we have a 500 gig hard drive. It's not mounted because you need special adapters to be able to mount it within this case. Unfortunately, I don't have those on hand. We shall do a little bit of a jimmy here and, uh, oh yeah, that's not ideal. Just make sure nothing shorts. Don't move the machine when it's on. Very, very important. It's okay. We will trust the machine to gravity. Gravity will help us out. Okay, just checking these connections here. Since that hard drive changed, might be good to check. I'm hoping for a 10 terabyte. Maybe we've got an arcade upgrade. Oh, no, that's still one terabyte. Bugger. That's okay. We'll, we'll continue with this. Maybe one day we'll upgrade it. But for now, that's more than enough to get this file server running. It is going to be on probably all the time, 24-7. And very useful. Now, quick tip here on the hard drive fitment. Best to fit them uh, one way, not the other. You'll see here... It does slot in, but it makes your cable fitment really problematic. Let me show you this quickly here. 
Uh, yep, so that doesn't work. Fit it the other way around, you'll see the cables prefer to fit one way around. Otherwise, no good. It's okay, easy mistake for you guys to pick up and correct. Okay, power supply and DVD drive fitted. Now, in terms of the CPU fan shroud here, very easy to remove. Uh, may want to periodically de-dust, especially when this machine is on 24-7. It's only going to do you favors, but we're not going to go that far. I actually uh, re-greased this fairly recently. Lots of dust in there. I think that's only been, uh, oh, I'd be lying if I say three months, somewhere around there, about three months. Oh, level up. We got a graphics card. Now, it does have integrated graphics, so you wouldn't need to upgrade, but you do have this option. You can fit something like the Quadro 600 very era appropriate but there is one caveat as you can tell this is a what they would call uh, large profile bracket not compatible we will need a small or short bracket in order to accommodate this card so we'll have to work on that I thought I had one but not on hand during filming maybe next time but for now it's okay we have integrated graphics that shrouds very easy to refit as well very important to help draw nice flow through the uh, CPU. Now, in terms of this front cover, there are these three green tabs, very easy to remove. Oh, very, very cool bonus here. You'll notice these screws, they are for hard drive mounting. So quite useful, you can put those to use to mount some of your hardware. Now, we'll give us a quick de-dust, highly recommend using compressed air. Uh, no, that's not what I meant, but that's close enough. Compressed air, very, very useful. Microfiber cloth, watch out for static. Nice cover there, very easy to refit. Lots of dust going around, that's okay. We'll catch all of that with the air purifier. That's looking really good. Nice lighting. Okay, let's get this back on and get this machine running. I think we're ready, upgrade's done. So very easy, you'll see the three green tabs poking through there, very important. Make sure you align those and the three hooks on the other side. Okay, I think that's looking really good. Little bit of dust, but that's okay. Cover time. So very easy to slot this in. Lots of good details on the side panel. And a very, very secure latch there as well. Quite well designed, as you would expect from HP. Give you a quick demo of how that works. Nice diegetic sound. Okay, let's refit that panel. Again, highly recommend you lay this down. Very difficult to do on this particular angle, and I may just lay it down to prove a point. Okay, there it is. One shot, keep an eye on those corners. All four need to slot into place, and I think we're ready to go. Beautiful. Okay, well, nothing left to do but to install our NVMe. Now, I did say this machine will be running 24-7. NVMEs have a tendency to run really hot. So what is one solution for this? Let's get a bit of paper down for contrast. There is one little trick. Let's see if this is gonna work. Highly experimental. I assume this will work. Come with me on this journey. Let's remove these screws. We'll get into the cover and exploit that NVMe that is hidden within this case. There they go. Very easy, make sure not to lose them. I imagine it's very difficult to trace those. Okay, simple uh, pull there. And there's our NVMe, very, very small, very short NVMe in this particular application. But that is fine, very, very handy. Now let's quickly remove the screw holding this NVMe in place. No, wait, we don't need to. If you wanna see how to do that, check my related video, full video covering how to do that. But as a quick demo, let's quickly remove that because there's something really cool that we're about to do. Now, looking at this NVMe, clearance is going to be our number one challenge here. And thermal pad. That's right, we're going to try and add some thermally conductive silicone pad. Check out the conductivity rating there, 10.8. I assume that's watts per mk. We'll have to check what those units mean. I'll put it up on the uh, video itself. But let's launch into unboxing wow that's a very very well sealed package it's okay we'll grab the stanley knife and work our way through watch out for that blade very sharp okay that should do the job no no that was a nightmare to get open butchering it that's okay we'll just tear that off perfect there it is thermally conductive silicon pad so what's the benefit of this well the concept will be this is going to help 
to convert our NVMe, which is currently, I guess, uncooled, to actually being cooled by the aluminium case directly, or at least that's my hope. Now, I've measured this down to the millimeter. I'm hopeful that this gauge will actually suffice, but I can't be 100% sure. Wish me luck. Now, thermal pad, very tr tricky substance, as you're about to find out, but benefits on this on NVMEs are phenomenal. You're gonna see a huge improvement in performance, especially when they thermally peak. Not a good thing. Okay, grabbing that knife, let's precisely measure this. I'm just gonna eyeball it. You guys should measure it very, very good. We'll just cover more or less the sticker, and I think that's about the perfect size. And we'll just do a random line down. Yep, that's perfect eyeballed. That is exactly the right size, hopefully, I think. Okay, so very important to peel off the sticker on these, otherwise they will not do their job. Once you do that, very, very sticky, it's going to hold on to the material. There it is. Make sure you peel off both sides. And, okay, that's not the best placement, but it is on. Now, it does it clear? Yes, that looks perfect. I'm hopeful the NVMe will make good contact. Now, if you're having trouble with this making contact, it's going to get a little tricky. Again, make sure you take off the sticker on both sides, otherwise the pad will not do its job. Now, I'm super hopeful this is going to clear. Not quite sure how well it's going to work. I'll have to do some thermal testing to make sure. Hopefully, that's going to clear. I'll relay that a little bit just to get it slightly better positioned. Likely not critical, but we'll give this a go. Okay, that's more or less it. So, with any expectations, this should now clear. Let's quickly get that standoff back in. Maybe it was better not to even remove the standoff. You may not have to, but just for illustration, we quickly did that as well. So refitting that screw, very straightforward. The motherboard, or should we say NVMe, slots into the standoff. So really quick, if you want to see that in more detail, check out my related video. Okay, let's see. Moment of truth, does it? Oh no, that does not look good. That does not look good. Okay, you don't have to use new thermal pad. That's not going to be thermally conductive. See what I did there, thermally conductive. It's okay, we're just gonna lay this down and we'll mash it back together. That, oh, that's getting a bit messy. It's okay, now you know what to look out for. Make sure it's 100% flush, otherwise you will take it off. Now, it's not a lot else we can do. I'm not quite sure, is that gonna clear? There are some little grooves on this particular NVMe adapter and I'm guessing they're not gonna allow any sort of profile. Thankfully, the compound can be mashed together again and we're going to do the best we can here. It may not be perfect, but it's pretty close. Okay, we'll call that perfect. Let's get the cover back on here. Very straightforward. Couple of screws. Make sure not to lose them. Preferably a magnetic screwdriver. Okay, that's looking excellent. Done. Quick tidy up. And there it is. Our NVMe is ready and loaded. Now I'm hopeful to see some really, really good thermals on this. And I can confirm so far, I saw massive reduction. Okay, no more arcade games. We don't have time for that. Let's launch straight into the server. Yes, it booted this time. I knew it would. That RAM issue was solved. Okay, there's our installation of TrueNAS. I told you it was going to be really quick. If you want to see how to do this, there are heaps of good videos. I probably do one myself at some point. But for now, it's installed. Let's do a quick reboot. Let it run through its system very, very quick. And there it is. Now all we have to do is go to the IP. Won't work for you. Check your own IP. But for now, let's do it. And yes, it's loading. And yes, it's done. Okay, that's Windows. You're correct. But I told you I was going to do both. Why not? So we can run Windows on this and we can run TrueNAS depending on your desires. Checking those hard drives. They're both there. Locking into our TrueNAS through our browser. Wow, that was easy. Can you believe it? We just installed TrueNAS on a very old but incredibly powerful machine. Quick proof of concept, 4K video file transfer on the HP Z840 to our new NAS server. Now, transferring these videos, you'll notice a couple of copies there. We're really loading this machine. There's the output there, Ethernet adapter. Notice the MBPS. That'll be megabits versus megabytes. Very important to know the difference. 
So far, you'll see really good speeds there. I've seen up to 1,000 megabits per second. That's incredible speeds through the LAN cable. Watch out for future videos. We're gonna go for 10 gigabit network speeds. Can you believe it? That's gonna be so fast. May or may not be on this machine. Keep an eye out, but it'll definitely go on the HP Z840 to try and get some really quick file transfers. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. Taking ages to get some of these out. Stay tuned, still working really hard to get them out. Keep an eye out, I will try to do one on TrueNAS itself. But for now, that gives you a really good rundown on how to set up your machine. Well done, take it easy out there. I will see you on the next video. Well done.